Hey folks, welcome to the canyons. It was uh, freezing cold when we got up here, but yeah. now it's quite delightful. And speaking of quite delightful, how about the all new Mercedes SL? It's not ugly anymore. They fixed it. That could be, if we were to do some honest advertising, it would be the new SL, no longer ugly. We fixed the front. Yeah, the You're last welcome. SL, I like to say, looked like it was a prototype that they hadn't taken the camouflage off yet. Uh, yeah, definitely. Very it, This awkward. one looks like they went so fast they stretched the old lights and now they actually fit the body. The, right. the last one was, let's well, just Well, they talk keep about throwing it. cars into the AMG division and they adopt that AMG GT front fascia, yes. right? So in this video, we will discuss a few key points about the new SL63 AMG. For one, how does it compare to other expensive GTs like the 911 GTS and Turbo, mm -hmm. the Bentley GTC, and even the C8 Corvette to throw one in Ooh, there for curveball. you? curveball. Who should be buying the SL63 and who should probably not be buying it? And uh, how does it compare to uh, the competition within Mercedes' own family, the like AMG, AMG GTS or GTC uh, Roadster? Boilerplate items, of course, the corporate 4-liter AMG twin-turbo V8, hot V, 9-speed uh, multi-clutch plate gearbox, in this case with all-wheel drive. Yeah, for the first time. The first time the SL got all-wheel drive. Right. Also has rear steer for yes. the first time. Yes, it does. And boy, does it. Boy. <laughs> uh, 577 horsepower at 6,500 RPM, 590 pound-feet at 2,500 RPM. Nice, wide, uh, torquey power band, all to shove around 4,305 pounds. Yeah, which is funny because the SL name originally meant super light. Yes. And that second part, we just... just it really it hasn't up. been true since the Gullwing. The I that's, mean, that's when they invented it, it was and not, then they moved it's away. It's never really, really been true. <laughs> uh, they have gotten rid of the hard top. Yeah. You know, that was heavy and clunky and uh, took up a lot of trunk space. But the car hasn't gotten much lighter because they've put in the all-wheel drive system. Nevertheless, oh, they've also put in a sort of a back seat. Right, it's a 2 plus 2 now. A back seat-ish. The first 2 plus 2 SL. Before that, there was just the parcel shelf back there. Which, yeah, um, this is basically a parcel shelf. Right? <laughs> According to our pals at Car and Driver with uh, their instruments, their fancy instruments, 0 to 60 in 3 flat quarter mile 11 2 at 125 top speed of 196 it's very fast it's and what's fast. funny about instruments is this comes with track pace which yes. like measures your track performance and yeah. they have the nurburgring pre-programmed i mean there's Just a bunch of stuff on this car that is meant for race tracks which honestly just, they, I don't know who's taking an SL on a racetrack, right, yeah. but it does have the AMG active ride suspension, which is air and height adjustable. It does have active rear steer, as Zach said, the electronic limited slip differential, but more importantly, heated seats, which I'll activate, the air scarf, which has some little fans right. back here that blow hot air on the back of your neck. And of course, because it's a Mercedes, massage seats, We'll go with an activating massage on the intensive setting, and uh, it really prioritizes driver comfort. Now, there's so much tech in this car, there's so many modes, I have to actually kind of think about stuff before I go for a drive. So, we'll go I believe into, there are six modes? There's a lot that of modes. A lot. Individual, snow, comfort, sport, sport plus, and pro. Pro, pro. for the racetrack, for the Nürburgring. Right. Now, I like to go into pro, but then put the suspension back into sport, because otherwise it is too stiff. Here we go. Hey guys, today's video is brought to you by Factor, and I love that we have this Factor food here at the studio. You know why? I know you're not gonna believe this, but something I forget to do all the time is eat. I may not look like it, but one of the ways you can easily find yourself unhealthy is by forgetting to eat, not making time to eat, and then getting super, super hungry and eating too much or not healthy enough food or eating at the wrong times. It's important to eat not just healthy food, but 
regularly scheduled meals, smaller meals more frequently throughout the day. And that's why I love Factor. They deliver fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep, or in this case, to the studio. We then have them in the fridge. So when I come back from a shoot, when I come back from my morning errands, I've got lunch ready to go. First thing in the morning, a factor smoothie. Those things are sweet. Get it down real quick. Tastes great. Vegan. Lots of vitamins and stuff in there. And they are delicious. And then when I come back, I've got the perfect size factor lunch. This is the chicken a la vodka with pasta and broccoli. It's super good. Factor is cheaper than dining in. You can put that money towards the holiday fun time that you're about to have this month. And thanks to Factor's commitment to ingredients with integrity, you can enjoy flavorful, chef-crafted meals totally guilt-free. Factor now offers 34 meals a week and 36-plus extra add-ons like smoothies, juices, and snacks to keep me going no matter what I have going on throughout the day. It really helps me stick to that idea of eating smaller meals more frequently and not getting so hungry that I eat a huge meal or an unhealthy meal. It's great. I love this Factor stuff. So you can get it yourself. Head to go.factor75.com slash TST60. I know that's complicated. So hit the link in the video description. It's all right there. Use code TST60. Go dot factor 75.com slash TST 60 and then use code TST 60 to get 60% off your first factor box. And thank you to factor for sponsoring today's video. <laughs> when you put the powertrain in kill, you get the burbly burble tune. Yeah. Coming up here behind you, it sounded exactly like I wanted it to sound. I had a great soundtrack from outside the car. It's crackle and pop city, right? Yeah. Now, what I notice immediately is that a lot of cars use technology to try to make the driver feel more connected to the road, right? They use technology to hide its hide to hide itself, right? You don't want to feel the technology. You want it to help you connect to the drive. In the SL, it's the other way around. The technology, even in the sporty settings, isolates you from the road and isolates you from the mass of the car. So as I go through corners, as I hit the gas, as I pull paddles, as I hit the brakes, I'm constantly aware that there are computers in between me and the tires every step of the way. Well, because they have computers doing torque vectoring, then they have computers doing brake vectoring, right. then they have the all-wheel drive split system, and, and the air re- suspension, and the air suspension with active anti-roll, so right. you don't have regular uh, sway bars anymore. And then for me, I noticed the rear steer is really pronounced, especially yes. at lower speeds. It does that thing like the old Ferrari FF, where it feels like the back suddenly hit ice. It totally does, like. It really makes you appreciate Porsche's rear steer yeah. and how invisible it is. And that may be contributed to by the rear engine, and that's why they dial that down. But in this, especially, you can feel it yeah. swinging the back end around, which is kind of weird, right? Yeah, it's, it's almost like there's, I don't know how many degrees there are of rear steer in this, but it feels like there's one or two too many because it doesn't take much to make it feel odd. This car has optional ceramic brakes for $8,800, which I might skip, (laughs) but you know, they're available. The gold calipers look cool. They do look good. Yeah. It's a GT car, right? So up here, if this is your goal on this mountain or on a track day, I would say probably you could skip this one, but long distance touring with the occasional windy road, four seasons, maybe even snow once in a while. It could be an only car. Uh, It does prioritize driver comfort. These seats are amazing. amazing. Yeah, They're so adjustable. They're so enveloping. There's so many ways to add or take away support. You've got the massage. My neck is warm. Now, 
My neck's only warm if I press my head against the headrest. Otherwise... Right, well, mine's a little blocked by the thing right now, but it does help. I can't figure out how to make it true, true manual. If I spend enough time in any gear, even in manual, it will go up to the next gear. And I'm in pro mode. Right, you're in pro mode. I don't know. Like, there is, there just isn't a true manual mode. If you change gears every 20 or 30 seconds, then it will stay in manual. Wait, does it shift up on you even when you're well below red line? If I am in, let's call it third gear, uh-huh. light throttle, well below red line for a while, it will eventually go up right there. It just went up to fourth on its own. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. yeah. And you were just coming out of the corner. That wasn't yeah. even what I would call a while. I thought you meant it would take like 30 seconds or 40 seconds. There's so many settings in this thing. We have a rear spoiler setting. I put that up when I drove this home the other day and I couldn't figure out how to put it back down. Yeah, well, if this knob here has is a double selectable thing. So you can tap, tap the bottom to change the function there. And you can tap the top to change the function. And then you hit the outer rim to activate the function you've just changed. So there are so many screens in this car. There are screens on the steering wheel. There's, there are. There are. There's two screens on the steering wheel. That's true. All right, you have a go. And let's see what you think. All right, it is wild. Can I also just say this big tilting touchscreen looks cool and is better than what the EQS is doing with the whole dash. But I left the top down for a while today. And this screen got so hot that when I went to put the roof back up, I, it was almost burning my finger. It was I, so I literally hot. thought about that last night because of exactly what you're saying. Like because this requires you to touch the tablet for so long, tablets always heat up in the sun. Your yeah. phone always heats up. And yeah. So I, I read this might be a trick. Let's see if it works. If you hold this button, someone said allegedly the top will actually go up and down, but it's not working. No, you have to swipe on the touch screen, which is very funky. That is. Like it's a swipe. Yeah, I, someone, a, a different review said you could just hold this button as a trick and it's not working. So that would be a nice trick because having to hold on the tablet it, for that it's, long is weird. Is one, silly, and kind of gets in the way of me, <laughs> yeah. the rich person. Like, I have to sit here and hold this. Two, if it sits in the sun with the top down, it gets really hot. Yeah. I do like that it tilts yes. with, to uh, reduce glare. You that's very clever. It. We'll tilt it up. Like, that's, that's, that's pretty, pretty clever. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I... There, because there's so many settings, you, and you have to do so many of them through the tablet, it's hard to change the settings while you're driving. Yes, it is. In le- except for the standard That's modes, right. the drive modes, which are just the clicky knob. Those are fine, but every other setting is really tricky to change while you're driving. Yeah, and yeah. you don't have the advantage of other cars We're where you can launch. Like, brace your hand to tap stuff. You have to move around because this is like an iPad Pro. Well, let's, let's do a launch, can you? traction I mean, control into a turn well, let's do it somewhere else <laughs> all right all right <laughs> all right here we go yeah the rear steer is odd like i mean you, you covered it but it is just very weird yeah it feels really strange you know it's great for parking lots for turning radius you know for tight maneuvers in the garage i liked it in my driveway i like it for going off of the angles of, of uh, steep driveways and, and entrances and stuff. Yeah. But in a performance way, it's strange. Well, because this is this is a big car. This is uh, four inches shorter than a four-door M3. Like, this is a very long automobile. So the rear steer does help, but I, I just think there's other cars where you don't feel it. Even yeah. in parking lots, it, you just notice you're maneuvering better, but you don't feel the back sliding out like it's on a caster. The ride is very nice. The ride's well, really nice. Well, that's what the air suspension just makes the glide. And in fact, in comfort mode, it's really like cloudy, wafty. And so I, I only like that on the bumpiest roads. For relatively smooth highway, sport gets it done really, really nice. Yeah, the, uh, the Panamera I drove was the same thing. Yeah. It's like normal was too floaty. Sport kind of had that good damping setting where it controlled the bumps, especially on some of LA's bad freeways. Right. I like the ra- the steering rack speed, 
the, the feel is artificial, but uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. I like the weight. It's not, it's not pretending to be too sporty and too heavy. I mean, it, this car does shrink around you. Like, it's very big. And there's a reason they raced the AMG GT and not this in, like, 24 Hours of Le Mans stuff. But this, is, uh, this architecture will eventually be handed down to the AMG GT. It'll be smaller, of course. But the whole chassis, it was way, way stiffer than the last one. They increased the rigidity a lot. Well, it's so much faster than the last one. This thing, this thing Woo. rips like it's it's definitely quick, and it de it objectively handles well. It's just weird in how it goes about that mission. Yes. You know? Yeah. If, you know, if it had, uh, if the MG GT has just fixed rear fixed rear end, that'll be nice. But man, I really this engine just continues to be amazing. I know they've been using it for a long time. This one basically has a little bit more boost and a slightly different tune. They didn't change. You know, turbochargers or any of the impellers or anything, but you know, you don't need to. They make so much power, and as long as they can keep getting the emissions that's required, like, why change it? Yeah, and in the S class, they've just paired it with an electric motor, and it makes a thousand yeah. pounds of torque. Yeah, uh, they did say a hybrid is going to come in the SL, but I think it's going to be with the V6, maybe. That sounds right. Imagine this with a thousand pounds of torque. No. I mean, yes, runway racing with the top down, sure. The wind management's nice. Like, we can have a the pretty normal pretty con good. conversation. And it's it's refined with the top up as well. It's not quite as good. You know, when you put up the, the soft top in a Porsche 911, it actually has, like, pretty firm panels for a headliner. You know, it's like, it's got, it's got rigid panels yeah. on the inside. So when the soft top is up from the inside of the car, you can you feel like you're in a hard top for the most part. With this, it's clearly like cloth. It's nice cloth, but but you can press into it, you know? Yeah, um, they, uh, it, it dampens the sound really well. It's like a three layer system, but I know what you mean because when I was behind you at one point coming up here, I actually saw the top like ripple a like little bit. Like flutter a little? A little yeah. bit. And uh, I was pretty surprised to see that. But I mean, like you said, this is a wonderful GT car, and then if you want to come up through the canyon, it does not feel out of place here at all. Right, right. So, who is this car for? To me, this car is for an executive that wants a four-season, you know, convertible daily driver that also goes fast. Yeah, absolutely. Right? It's it's not it's not for someone who really needs to put people in the back seat because unless you're very short that's not really going to work um same as a 911 in that regard right i would say how does it compare to 911 gts gts is cheaper this thing starts at 178,000 bucks and as equipped is 206,000 dollars so now we're talking porsche turbo cab that's turbo cab price not yeah. gts price right. so so how does it compare to turbo cab i'd probably rather have the 911 turbo it, it definitely feels more suited for this kind of driving, but yeah. what I think is Mercedes, I like their interior architecture. I like the organic shapes, although they call this hyper analog, which I think is just a made up word. That doesn't mean that anything. Doesn't mean like anything. to me, that means this is round and used to have gauges and we got rid of the gauges. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know, the SL to me always just looks like it's from eight years in the future, like right now, whereas the 911 looks precise and yeah. motor sporty, but it never looks like it's, um, more expensive than it actually is. Right. And I think, you know, even with a C7 Corvette Z51, if you don't need this back seat, the, Z, the Corvette has a bigger trunk. It goes just as fast. Mm -hmm. It's half the price. Even loaded, it's half the price. Um, now, it's some of the materials aren't quite as nice, but some of them are. You know, the, the new Corvette is not, I mean, this has better seats, and this has more space, and this has massage seats. But, new Corvette has carbon fiber. New Corvette has the same plastic buttons that this has. New Corvette has these same clicky knobs. True. You know, there's and a really good ride. Yeah, and a very good ride. So, uh, and and better is a little more driver oriented. Do you think though, like maybe that cross shopping would happen on the lower end of SL, like the SL fifty five? Possibly. But I don't know if someone's shopping for a hundred eighty thousand dollar car. Possibly. They probably wouldn't even look at the Chevy dealership. May that's probably true. Bentley GT. 
just feels much more special on the inside. The materials are extraordinary. Yeah. The 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 touch of the metal and the and the wood and the design of their dashboard is, is beautiful and, extra, and extremely functional. Right, and it and and it it's more expensive than this, probably high twos, but it really says something more than this says. I don't think a lot of people look at this car and see two hundred and six thousand dollars. True. If I if you ask me what does an SL cost, I'd say. Uh, 130 140 I wouldn't say 200 especially when they sell like the SL55 right. and maybe they'll make a 53 you know yeah. the the price spread is much wider right. whereas the Bentley you immediately know there's no real cheap version right so <clears> this <throat> or uh, AMG GTS or GTC I prefer the AMG GT because it's smaller yeah. and, it's, and it's just as fun I'm not putting anyone in the back of this or the back of the AMG so cuz it's in the back seat so I prefer the smaller car right I don't need the all wheel drive and I think the AMG GTC is prettier just as roomy in the front seat you don't have to go through a bunch of touch screens to get to the drive modes uh, you do have to hit a lot of buttons every time you start it up to get it in the right mode which is frustrating but that is a very timeless design um, yeah. and is is still even though it's been out for six years still looks amazing um, and I think is more fun to drive without so many of the extras and quirks that I don't really need uh, in this car. Yeah, this has too much stuff. I, I am curious if, if the next AMG GT will get this same it might. media system. It definitely might, yeah. But this car does make an amazing, uh, you know, one car fits all solution, right? Four seasons, only car, any technology you could possibly imagine, amazing stereo, amazing ride if you're gonna do 20,000 miles a year. Yeah. Uh, whereas the AMG GT is more of like a, a weekend uh, sports car. Our audio recorder has died, so at some point we will have shifted to the GoPro audio if you hear this. So thank you to Mercedes for letting us have a go. Thanks to you guys for watching, and we'll see you later. And remember, Always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off the Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com slash TST.